Hello friends, we are going to a road trip again on JB's Man Cave. This road trip is Dago Martin in Trinidad, an island in the Caribbean. We are actually in Dago Martin. It's on the left. On the right is Pity Valley, which we already have another video for. And on the left side, you see that little map showing the side of Dago Martin we'll be covering. This video is recorded in high definition, so you should see a good quality. And of course, you will be rushing to say thank you, JB. But really, if you really want to help support me in recreating what is over a three hour video, please do donate. You can go to jbmancave.com or jboard.com and hit the donate button and give whatever you can. It's very much appreciated. I do this for my boys. And if you want to know more about that, you can always check the about section of either of those websites or right here on my YouTube channel. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Let others do so as well. It's very much appreciated if you like and share. So we are on St. Lucian Road, I believe. We are heading north. And I'm going to give you sort of a roundabout view of Dago Martin before we start hitting the inner streets. Now, like I said, this video is over three hours long. And so what's going to happen is we are going to cover an immense amount of territory, which makes up Dago Martin. It's not an easy trip. I'm not going to capture every single nook and cranny, every little street, because probably this video would be 12 hours long. And I don't think you could sit through 12 hours. You might even be able to sit through three hours or more. So that's why I placed that little counter on the top right. So if you need to take a rest, you need to take a break, you need to come back to the video, you can always do that by checking the time on the right. However, if you are logged into YouTube with a Gmail account, YouTube should, and that's just should, remember where you last left off when you paused. But as a matter of note, you always have the counter to the top right. Now I have lived in Dago Martin for a very long time. Since the days of my youth, I traversed a lot of these places here and they bring back a lot of memories. A lot of it has changed. It has become like everything else in Trinidad, very commercialized. But some things remain the same, the general look. Of course, all the potholes are still there. And that seems to be something that can never go away from Trinidad. In fact, this particular road has some very dangerous potholes that I wish they would take care of because somebody coming in this area, especially when it's wet and it's raining, can easily damage their car or cause an accident. Look at those beautiful pui trees that we are passing. And some of these streets, if you have lived on them before, may look familiar. You can always put your comments in the comments area. Tell us what you know about Dago Martin. Now, Dago Martin is not just this side. But I would dare say this is one of the nicer sides of Dago Martin. We will see some other upscale areas. Um, the houses to the right, uh, some of the ones behind those houses nearer to the mountain are some of the nicest areas in Dago Martin. I guess most of the houses that tend to be on a mountainous area uh, tend to be that way, but it's not always the case. Anyway, so we continue down this road, we're heading north. The mountains in the distance would be the north coast. If we were to go over them, we would see the sea. I do have another video where I actually cover a lot of that area. It's about Blue Basin and Patna Village. Make sure and look for it. Now I'm hoping that I can dish out more of these videos as time goes by. That's one of the secondary schools, Dago Martin Secondary. And that on the right there is actually a Hindu temple, which a lot of people don't realize there is a big Hindu community in Dago Martin. Now this little area here used to be just land, grassland that is. I used to know a family called the Ablacks who used to live in there, Tomato Trace I believe, but that's all since gone now. And this particular direction will take you to what is known as the water wheel, which again, I have another video for. Make sure and look for it. I'm going to turn left here. 
because I really don't want to go back into the same area I have already covered. On the right is supposed to be a museum, which also features the water wheel and as far as I understand a bit about nature, birds and so forth, but it is closed for renovations for a long time. Now as I go across here, this little bridge, on the left here you will see an unsightly site. That is garbage strewn within the area and that I have seen there all the time. I don't know why, why garbage in this area isn't picked up as regularly, as regularly as it should. But it is a talking point for whomever administrates this area. Really needs to be collected on time and more frequently. As you can see, when we turn right here, you will see the water wheel to your left. There it is. Again, I have another video for that. Make sure to look for it if you want to learn and get a closer look at the water wheel. Now, if you are new to JB's Man Cave, you will realize that most of my video is kind of raw. And that is it. I'm not cutting it up. I'm not just showing you the highlights. I'm showing you as it is, the raw. So this video is completely raw. In other words, I'm just driving, not looking for anybody in particular, nothing staged, nothing rehearsed, just me driving on a Sunday afternoon, trying to pick up what Dago Martin is like. Those of you from this area who have never seen it before, but were curious about Dago Martin would enjoy this because you would want to see it as it is and not something that I made up. Now, as I said before, on the right there is like a little St. James now, full of shops, full of places to eat. Um, but before, it was all green. Miles and miles of it. In fact, before Partner Village or any of those areas came to be, all of this was green on the right. Now, they have their own stadium. That's it there on the right. They have regular football matches and other track and field events. It's a good thing for the people in the area. Now this particular part of Dago Martin we are going to turn into just now, here on the right, is called Bagatelle. Now Bagatelle is, from my earliest memory, was a place that I would go hiking to the North Post. Basically there are lots of hikes that are taken along the North Coast of Trinidad, both East and West. And this is one way of accessing it. So I used to go up there with some friends and we would hike and camp and so forth. However, Bagatelle over the years has developed a reputation the more and more popular, populated it got. And that is of one that is full of crime and so forth. But as you can see, I am traversing the area without incident. Like anywhere else, there's good and bad. But Bagatelle is always seemingly in the news for one reason or the next. Now this is a long strip of road and it goes far up into the mountain. I will go as far as I reasonably can. I mean there are places where I could try and push it but I don't think it's necessary because like I said this video is not just about Bagatelle, it's about Dago Martin and I want to cover as much of it as I can. Now, if you're unfamiliar with um, places in Trinidad or in the Caribbean in general, this is how it looks. Many may have referred to this with words like ghetto or poor or insecure or any of those words. But really, this is the true and true Caribbean. And because it looks like that, most people would not recognize it who come from abroad because they are constantly shown pictures of beaches, sand, coconut trees, and so forth. But this is what the Caribbean actually looks like. And most of us growing up would know places like, for instance, the one on the left, which is called a shack. It would, uh, it would be like the modern day North American 7-Eleven. But there you would get your drinks, your sweets, your chocolates, your snacks, whatever have you. And growing up as a kid, we'd actually populate those places with our presence, trying to buy something for what is called a bob, which is actually 24 cents, but is like a 25 cent piece. 
Now, one of the beautiful things about Trinidad is the green. The immense green and trees. These kind of areas actually allow for some kind of green. Thankfully. Areas that tend to be more built up actually remove the screen. For instance, look at how this person put up this, these beautiful crotons. It's the colorful leafed plants on the left. There should be lots of that all over. There are people around the world who wish they had this tropical climate in which they could grow stuff so easily. And we do not take advantage of it. Now you can see the more we go up Bagatelle, the worse the road becomes. I'm driving a 4x4 uh, Nissan Frontier D22. It has um, the capability of going up roads like this with relative ease. So that's not a problem. However, I don't know how far I could go. Now it used to be and here has all changed a lot for me, that you would go to a certain point and then you would walk up a trail. But really the way it is now, I don't know where the trail begins or ends because it's all built up by houses. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, that trail that would take you up the mountain and then you could go um, to the north coast between a small island and the mainland that you could actually jump over it. I don't know if how many of you know what I'm talking about, but that's where I'm talking. I'm trying to remember there was a Rasta, a, a Chinese Rasta that used to live in the mountain there. Is it Chang is his name? can't remember if it's Chang. It was one of my friends, old time school friends, uncle. So we would actually pass by him on the way up. And after finding the area, I've been up there at least three or four times. Very enjoyable. Very beautiful. There's so many scenic places in this country that are left unknown, untapped, but should be preserved in some way. Now you can see the roads here are bad, but funny enough, regular roads sometimes actually look like this. A lot of the roads in the southern parts of Trinidad look like this, are constructed like this and do not get repaired as often. Now, in case you're wondering about the way people build their houses in the Caribbean, yes, they are planning and architects and architecture is supposed to be involved with housing plans, proper plumbing and so forth. But really, in the end, most people just do what they need to do and they do that to survive. So they put up whatever blocks of clay, wood, shacks, whatever have you in order to live and survive. Rent in Trinidad is extremely expensive. And if you have a family, even more so, uh, most places that are for rent are at ridiculous prices. So what happens is a lot of people tend to get together and rent. What hasn't helped this either is the fact that there have been a lot of immigrants coming into the country from Venezuela and other countries. And this has caused the area to be saturated with a lot of people demanding places for rent. And this has made the landlords happy because now they have a way of jacking up prices, making it hard for locals to get places to rent. So a lot of families may go together. You might find somebody living with their aunt or their uncle or whatever have you. But you can tell it's more or less like village life and that it is. Most anywhere you go in Trinidad, it always has this village sensibility to it. You find like if, you know, you could just go out and talk to your neighbor or so forth. Now I'm not saying everywhere is like that. Not everywhere is hospitable. 
but um, more or less trainees are very welcoming, will always be able to help you, give you a right, and uh, give you some pointers. You might find your neighbor might bring some fruit for you in the morning and tell you hello or whatever have you. That's all part of Trini culture. So I'm going to pass this vehicle and head out of Bagatelle. Of course, I could take any of these number of side streets and show you what is there, but I can tell you that it's nothing different from here. And again, because I'm trying to cover the whole of Deco Martin, it would be impossible for me to cover every single street. Now, probably you're looking at some of the vehicles and wondering what kind of vehicles are they? Most of the vehicles here are of Japanese make. There are some imported from North America too, but they're not as common. Older vehicles tend to be of a Japanese brand, but I have seen Chinese and other brands coming into Trinidad regularly now. Not sure how they hold up, but they are here. So we have left Bagatelle and getting on to Dago Martin Main Road. This is like a loop. This main road goes like in a loop almost around Dago Martin and through it. Of course, you may recognize that Dago Martin makes a part of a valley. You have a place called Pity Valley on one side and Dago Martin on the other side. But it's also the ward of Dago Martin. So sometimes people might get confused with that. All these side streets here can take you to any number of places that you could explore and adventure. Some of them we will pick up in this three hour video. So if you find I'm just racing past everything, don't worry, I will come back to some of it. The major streets that is, not all of them. If you find it's clear and there aren't many people about, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a Sunday afternoon. Most things are closed by now. Sometimes in Sunday morning, you will see people about, there are some places open, the market, the grocery and so forth. But on Sunday afternoon, most people have closed up and gone home. Now you might say, well, why don't you record this when people are about? Well, one thing that Diego Martin suffers with a lot is a lot of traffic. And if I was to do that, this video would be even longer. And not only that, but having people about having me stop in traffic would take away from your ability to see the buildings on the left and on the right. You can see a lot of buildings being built up actually. Look at that huge building on the left. I don't even know what that is. The police station is obliquely on your left. Dago Martin police station. Straight ahead and to your right would be the industrial estate. And when Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard is also on your left. We're going to come back to that. Now again, while I'm grateful for you to watch my videos, I do need your support in helping me in the creation of this kind of video. This video is all, all over three hours long. The amount of editing, production, time that it took needs more than just simply thanks. While I am grateful for your thanks, I do need people to support my channel so please do head over to jboard.com or jbmancave.com, hit the donation button and give whatever you can. I know there are those of you who can't, but just liking or sharing or commenting is good enough. In my Pity Valley video, I had made um, a similar request. 
Sorry to say not many donated in that particular video. And while I have gotten many good donations in the past, it was a bit disappointing to see that there weren't many donations. So I do this for my boys. And your donation is very much appreciated. I am actually thinking of opening a membership facility and while I did a poll on it, not many were in favor of it because they want to see my videos uh, without paying a subscription. But I'm gonna do that for certain videos. I'm also gonna make a membership tier that will have the ability of certain choice members that are willing to pay a membership fee see these videos in advance of everybody so they will be in a no long before everybody else. Tell me what you think about that in the comments area. Now this part of Dago Martin does have some interesting houses, especially on the left side, there are some nice houses. On the right side is a place that is not so popular in history. There were so tormenting things that went on there and I don't wanna go on about that. But they have since put up a wall. However, this part of Dago Martin is one of the more upscale parts of Dago Martin, especially on the right and the left, in which I do cover within the three hour video. That beautiful Pui tree on the left that we just passed. Now if I was to take left, I would go down Crystal Stream. That would take me to Pity Valley. But we are continuing on the Dago Martin Main Road. In this direction, we are actually heading south. Not into the southern part of Trinidad, but just the direction is south. Following this road would eventually take us to places like Starlight, Four Roads, and back to the highway. On the left there is a Chinese grocery. It used to be an automotive place as well as TT Post used to be there. That's the post office. But since then the grocery and a tire shop has taken it over. Although of recent I believe that even the tire shop has closed down. Now, the more we go this way, the more populated it becomes, the more commercial it gets, a lot more traffic and so forth, regardless of Sunday or not. Some of these areas may be recognizable for you, maybe they're not. Tell me what you think in the comments area, always putting a timeline to what you're commenting about, otherwise we won't know what you're talking about in a three hour video. This particular area here is by Westby's, which I have covered in other videos. It's groceries and different junk food outlets, hardware, Drug store, more junk food outlets, a bank. That bank where it is now, that for the Citizens Bank, actually used to be a factory. They used to make chocolate bars there, and that tree on the left is called the Big Tree. Usually they decorate it every Christmas. Now this part here we're coming to is called Four Roads. It's an intersection that takes you into different directions. We are on the Dago Martin main road, but the road crossing it is called the Mon Coco Road. And this particular intersection is very popular because it used to be the way people get in and out of Dago Martin before the highway, and as a way to get quick access to La Puerta and West Moorings. It's still that, that way, but it's used a bit differently now. The fire station is still on your left. There's also a police station, the Four Roads police station on your left, and the popular Starlight Shopping Plaza is on the right.
which actually at one time was a driving cinema. I remember going there as a youngster. There is a gas station on your right, a gym. And coming up here now is a place called Victoria Keys. Now here is a bit different, the traffic situation. It ends here the road. So you can only turn right. And as I turn right, you will see what Victoria Gardens looks like. That's a more upscale area of Digo Martin, but it's one of the few areas that has been able to maintain a security guard at its entrance. And because of that, I really cannot go inside here recording everything. So I'm just going to tell the security guard that I merely want to turn around and will do so so that I can get back out. It used to be that at one time, uh, a lot of areas, if you've seen in my video, would have had particular blocks of their residence or their road or so forth blocked off like this. But it has since been removed because people can't just simply come together and block off a road because these roads are relatively public. Victoria Gardens has been able to do it. I guess their argument is that this section of the community is away and off from public access, but not everywhere has gotten that, not even West Moorings. That road on the right would take us back to the highway. Now, remember today is Sunday afternoon, so Starlight Shopping Plaza is closed. But if there were lots of cars here, you wouldn't have actually been able to see on the left very well. One thing that is always open on Sundays now is Massey's food stores, it used to be called Hilo. Some of you would remember Republic Bank, which I believe is once called Barclays Bank at one time. Now I just ran into the bank and now that I'm back in the truck, we will continue the trip. Like I said, I keep everything raw and I could have edited this out, yes, but then you wouldn't have seen the backside of Starlight Shopping Plaza. Now here's a bit tricky place to maneuver. When it's not a Sunday, it's a lot of traffic here, so you always have to watch how you're coming out. But you can get in lane and turn right and go here if you wanted to get access to the gas station, which is what I'm going to do. So you get an idea of what a more modern fuel station looks like in Trinidad. Very similar to the States. And they have those things called quick shops which you could go in and it's like a mini grocery. So I've done that, speeded up the video, and now we're getting back on to Diego Martin Mineral and I'm going to Starlight Shopping Plaza because I want to stop in Massey. And in so doing, you will get a better history on these places too. Remember, all of here used to be a driving cinema. Now, this particular building here used to be a bank. I believe it used RBC, but has since closed down since the pandemic. And I don't see anybody else occupying it. Behind this is a gym, a drugstore, and a couple of other shops. Not sure what they do, but we're going to pass it. That's the gym on the right, the drugstore on the right. 
And this is the back side of Starlight Shopping Plaza. From here, you can exit onto Mon Coco Road, which is ahead. We are going to turn left and continue. Now, when we turn left, we'll be on Mon Coco Road and we're going to go up to an area called La Puerta. But before we get there, we need to access some of the streets. As you can see, this particular road has just been paved and painted. So it's one of the rare opportunities to see a nice road in Trinidad. On the left would be an extension of West Moorings. I believe it's called Goodwood Park Extension or Goodwood Gardens. And um, I covered that in the West Moorings video. You can look for that. Now, many of you might have traversed these places but never went to the extent. Usually this particular area is used to get from Dago Martin to West Morans and so forth to escape traffic. But very few people will actually take the time to drive further up and see what's there. Well, that's what I do in these videos. Go to areas that most people won't. So let's see what's up here. Now, like most places that are on a mountain, at some point it sort of reaches a dead end where the houses sort of make a cul-de-sac and stop your, your access to them. In that case, we just simply turn around. Sometimes I would stop a bit if it has a nice view, but in this particular case, the houses are blocking the view. So I, there's nothing to see here. In other videos, I do go even higher up and it's a magnificent view. Yes, the name is just like California, but I don't think anything here would remind you of California, USA. I do like how they took care of the places, the birds, the green. It's very important to me to maintain a lot of green, invite nature, rather than making everything concrete. especially in a place like the Caribbean where so many things can grow and beautify our place. We just don't utilize it. Now, I could go straight ahead, then turn left, then turn right, then turn left again, and that would take me to a place called La Puerta. But instead of just taking you and escaping there, I'm going to take you this way, so you can see the other side of, I believe it's Broom Street. I have an impromptu car wash there. Here in the Caribbean, people tend to take their place and sometimes multi-purpose it. 
basically a residential area might suddenly have within its midst a shop or so forth or some sort of service not everyone likes that but sometimes people just need to make money so we're going to turn left here and that's going to take us to La Perta. Again, many of you who might know these areas might be a bit awestruck at how things have changed or remain the same. Either way, please do let me know in the comments area. Now one of the big questions people are probably going to ask about this video is when did you record it? This was recorded just a few months ago before it was published. So it's relatively new. Things that you see now are as they are. That's a primary school on the right. Now you'd think that these streets are for just one vehicle but no, we make the best of it and make it for two vehicles. Up ahead on that side where the mountain is, where you can, if you can see those antennas on the top of the mountain, that is actually Fort George. Below it is Petty Valley. This again is sort of a shortcut that connects West Moorings, people coming from Carnage to Dago Martin. They use this to escape traffic because the four roads junction by West Bees and all those areas where there's so much traffic can become so clogged that you could hardly move. So people will try to go in the back here to escape it. And then they would turn right. But we're going left because I want to show you La Puerta. Now, La Puerta, like Bagatelle, has developed a reputation because of crime. And unfortunately, it used to be a very nice area. But there were some very gruesome murders that took place here. Kidnappings and so forth. That has really brought down the area. But as you can see, I am driving through. Nobody is trying to terrorize me. Nobody is holding me up at gunpoint. A lot of these incidents that we read are very specific to days and persons. In other words, you could come up here and feel relatively safe driving up. Now, it used to be that when you come up La Perta, you would get a good view. But that's not so much the case anymore. Because there are so many houses and so many things have been built up here, you really can't see much. However, I do get some good shots as I turn around the vehicle in very small roads. I used to know a family up here called the Pachecos. used to visit them regularly. Not sure what became of them. But when I did come up here to visit them, there was not all this built up area, all this infrastructure and so forth. Yes, there was the road, but not so many houses. And definitely not so many houses on the mountain seems to be built up a lot now. People in Trinidad seemingly love to just go up and up and up and keep building up on mountains. And the interesting thing about that is it's actually very costly to build on a mountain, to bring up materials, the dependency on water. Usually lampposts, electricity poles tend to be there already. But other things related to infrastructure, not so much. Now, 
Now I was just about to turn left into here, but I realized the turn is way more than I thought, so I had to put in a 4x4. And I know you can't tell, but this is a very steep mountain, this particular path. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's not so easy to tell from just watching a screen. But maybe you can look at the wall on the left and see how steep it is. Now, look at that narrowing part on the left there. It left me very little to go over. And what is worst is was when I got here and realized I really didn't have a place to turn around because it ends right here. So I sort of had to kind of maneuver my vehicle. It's pretty long at around 17 feet. And you can't see it, but the, the mountain continues up at a sharp 180 degree turn. So in other words, it's like parallel or a dog leg. There is no way the vehicle could turn there. So I had to stop here and sort of inch my way in turning around. And in so doing, you can see the rear end of the vehicle going up into the air. And in so doing, you can see the houses on the mountain. And I'm trying to figure out how to do this as best as possible. Again, going into areas where you haven't been in a long time can get you trapped. Something is blocking me there. And if you notice, there's no barrier. So if I was to go a foot more past that green plant, I would be literally in somebody's house. Which, when you think about it, is kind of scary. You're counting on every person that passes here to drive according to what they have to do in order to survive the steep incline, as well as the vehicle's brakes. Maybe you're getting a glimpse of it, but you can see the beautiful view of Port of Spain on the right. It's really nice from up here, and I actually stopped here to take a look at it. And there I go, I took out the camera to show you. Put it back. And I have to make sure it's mounted back well because if it's not, it would vibrate and that would be a terrible picture for you. I like to pride myself by making these long videos as clear and crisp as possible. And there's nothing that I hate in as much as watching a video that is all shaky. Of recent, I was taking some videos with my phone. And it just is not as good as my regular camera equipment. And even though I put it up, um, it was disappointing to me to watch it. Some people don't care, but I like to see stuff without shaking or vibration. Anyway, we're con going back down La Puerta. Of course, like anything else in Trinidad, you could always go to the right or the left. There will be some road that take you, would take you to another access point. I don't have time again to visit every little nook and cranny because, like I said, 
I'm trying to cover the whole of Diego Martin in just about 3 hours and 30 minutes, which is just not enough time. To properly cover Diego Martin, every street, every nook and carry, it'll take about 12 hours for sure. Probably more than that. But in this recording, you will get a gist of what Diego Martin is like. As you can see, as we pass, there is a big trash problem. While today is Sunday and they haven't picked up trash yet, still people do not put the trash properly. So sometimes it's squashed by cars, dogs pass, vagrants open it and so forth. The sanitary system definitely needs to be changed. I don't know how they will do it, but it needs to be taken care of. Like that dumpster there. But the dumpster shouldn't be on the road. So we continue down to La Parta and I think I will take you on a quick tour of one or two side streets just so you get an idea of what it is like um, on these sides. It has, La Parta has gotten more built up but not necessarily nicer. This particular road ends right there. Some mango tree on the right, like it's now starting to bear. One thing too in Trinidad that you'll always see is a variance in the kinds and types and colors of houses. Each person always has their different tastes, likes and so forth. So up ahead is the Dago Martin main road, which is what we will come to um, right here by the past the stop sign. Again, most people use this Aperta road for the purpose of bypassing traffic. That's a West Bees compound on the left. And we have covered a bit of here before, but we're going to do it again in order to reach all the areas. Sometimes I have to take the same route once or twice or three times in order to get it, get you to see everything. So it used to be that you would turn here, past this way, and you would get on to the Dago Martin Highway. But that's no longer the case. It's all blocked off now. In order to get to the Dago Martin Highway, you have to get to it via four roads, which to me 
is very silly. Because Four Roads is already a congested area and you're asking people coming out of the Deco Martin Rain Road to congest it even further. There should be at least a flyover there. But flyovers in Trinidad is like a big deal. They don't put many of them. Now this particular area begins one of our views of residential areas on the flats of Dago Martin. When I say flats, not on the mountain. Sometimes you would pass these areas and you would never know what's in it. For instance, I thought I could keep on going around here, but nope, I can't. And then I have to figure out how am I going to get out of here? Do I turn around? Do I reverse? Has somebody been nice and left their gate open? If not, I kind of have to edge bit by bit. You can see all the security warnings on some of these walls. I don't know how well it does that becoming an anti-theft deterrent for thieves. But uh, crime is a very ticklish problem here in Trinidad. Such areas like that, like how that little community is accessible only by that certain road makes it easy to detect who is coming in and who's going out. When you have a road passing through a neighborhood that connects to some other area, you really can't track who comes in and out. But in a case like that, it's good. So this is back on the Diego Martin Main Road and we're heading north this time. We just came from this direction. And what I'm going to do is swing in here just to give you an idea of the new built up place. Years ago, nothing like this was here at all. And of course it's Sunday afternoon, so it's all closed up. If I came earlier in the morning, it would have been all built up people moving up and down, lots of traffic and so forth. Which again, like I said, would just slow me down. I do have the other videos where I'm driving through here on a normal day with traffic. So if you ever wanted to see what it looks like with people and cars moving about and so forth, you can always look for those videos. In the meantime, I'm just going to show you more of the streets. Some of these areas have ridiculously big houses on them. Look at that set of, I guess, townhouses. I'm not sure what they are. Condos just above us. The engineering that goes into some of these structures is amazing to look at. 
In Trinidad and Tobago, we build with concrete and steel, mostly. No wood like the States, so our houses tend to be stronger, proper, able to withstand the elements. That's a dead end, so I'm going to turn around and head in the other direction. And friends, I would like to remind you that if you enjoy what I do, the time, the immense time that has been taken to record this video, to show it to you, to edit it, to publish it, to put all the street names, it's an immense undertaking. And if you truly appreciate that, please go to jboard.com or jbmancave.com. Hit the donate button. There's also a link in the video's description with a link to the donation section where you can donate whatever you can for the work and progress of JB's Man Cave as well as in support of my boys. In the future, I if I don't get enough donations, I'm going to start a membership section. So those who truly appreciate these, the time that goes into these videos can take a membership and become a monthly sponsor. So if you would like to help keep these videos open for everybody, please do donate and show your appreciation that way. So going up here, it's very steep. And the houses here are very large, like mansions. Some of them might be condos, some might be townhouses, some might be a guest house. Nevertheless, the structures are huge. And you're probably wondering why I'm calling up this way. Well, probably I tried to go up in two by four or four by two and ended up finding myself going up slow. So at some point I may change to four by four. But to change to four by four, I have to actually stop the vehicle and put in the gear. So sometimes I don't like to stop. I like to keep going. But I believe on this particular turn here, I would have to do it. I seriously can't imagine having to drive up such steep places every day. Definitely not with a truck. Although a truck is best suited for this. But you know, a truck is also very heavy. So it puts a lot of strain on the engine, burns more fuel, etc. But you keep going up and up, and as you do, you'll get to see more of the eye candy as far as architecture goes. Now, I thought this was particularly interesting on the left here. It looks like an uncompleted structure. But whatever it was going to be, or is going to be eventually, it was truly huge. And I decided I think I had enough. Not sure if that turn there would have turned me into their particular property, or if it was part of the road. But I thought that was enough for me. Some of these sections can take you going on and on and on, and I would not see the rest of Diego Martin. But as I turn here, you get a nice view. Look at that foundation wall on the right. It 
And just behind this house on the left, you can see Port of Spain. And even in an area like this, the roads are terrible. There's Port of Spain there. I do have some better videos of covering Port of Spain using um, Fort George as the lookout. Make sure to look for that video. Now, one reason I stopped here is because in this particular model of vehicle, in order to take out the 4x4, you have to reverse 3 feet or 4 feet, as the case may be, to disengage the release for 4x4. So below us, there's Dago Martin. And on that road, you would definitely need very good brakes. I don't see much of anything really stopping somebody from going clear over a wall into somebody's house or whatever have you. If something were to happen, I wouldn't even want to think about that. So as you can see, we took one side street and look at the adventure it took us on. That's how it is with side streets here in Trinidad. Sometimes you can take them and they can take you on and on, seeing all kinds of things and places that you have never been. Here's one with a very interesting name. I've come up a number of times here for stuff unrelated to just touring. But there are some particular townhouses here that are very interesting to me. Now, I don't know about you, but the way they are built just really interests me. It almost made me feel like I was in a foreign land. Just keep watching. Because, you know, all that you're seeing here does not seem like it would take you to that. Looks very trini. Broken up roads. Uneven and so forth. But when you get to here, it's like, what the heck? What's going on? You don't see buildings like this a lot in Trinidad. The design was very interesting to me. The way they built it on the mountain. And it looks like it gives three levels. What do you think? I liked it. Of course, looking at it in person and seeing it through um, a camera lens is two different things. You might be saying, what the heck, JB? I don't see anything special there. But, you know, I didn't say it was the greatest of, um, place on earth. I'm just saying that I liked how it looked.
but nevertheless you can always tell me in the comments area. So this takes us back to Digger Martin Main Road. And if you have been with me all this time, since the beginning of this video, I applaud you for staying with me. Thanks so much for watching, it's really appreciated. We still have 2 hours, 16 minutes and more to go. So this is on the other side of the mountain we just came. Sometimes you go in these areas and you don't realize how much there is to it. Some people really do well at the way they do their landscaping. Sometimes your house may not be that great a deal, but because you do, do such great landscaping, it makes your house look spectacular. And some people know how to do that. Now look at this. I could actually drive down there if I wanted. This is the entrance to the Dago Martin River and up above it is the Dago Martin Highway and I'm just showing you here um, what it looks like. This is an access point so that if people have to take machinery down there to clean it or to do whatever, they would access it from here. Of course, if you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It is free. Some people think that when I say subscribe, it means pay for it. No, just click the button. Make sure you're logged in to your Google YouTube account, which is a Google account or Gmail account that you have. And once you're logged in, you can subscribe. Being subscribed just means that you appreciate what I do and that YouTube may give you notification of new videos. When you subscribe to somebody, it shows within your subscription list who you have subscribed to. So you can always keep up with them. But if you're a part of many people, I mean you're a follower of many channels, you probably have to come back and visit JB's Man Cave every now and again to find out what's new. But I make videos every day, whether it's long or short. I tend to make about three or four shorts a day and long videos every now and again. But as time goes by, my long videos are going to start to increase. So you'll have to look out for a new video every now and again. One of the feelings that I like to give on my videos is as though you're in a truck driving with me. I don't know how well I do that, but that's the feeling I want to give. So this is Semper Gardens. It's a nice little place up here on the mountain. When we turn around, you'll get a nice view. Sometimes you go up in these areas and you feel like you have left Trinidad and you're now in somewhere else. Does it give you that feeling? It does for me. Simply because you're not accustomed to seeing mountains, like, or not mountains, uh, houses on mountains like this. With gigantic retaining walls and nice shrubbery and manicured places and so forth. I wish it could be more customary for all our people because it is possible. I wish people would get out of their head that because they um, may not be wealthy or rich, their place has to be unkept or they can't put paint on their walls or whatever, or just simply clean up. You know, show pride in your place.
This is the Diego Martin main road again. In this direction we would be going north. And in this direction we'll be turning west. That house on the right is a known house. Do you know what it is? If you know, tell me in the comments area and put a timeline. Look at that beautiful bougainvillea. That's a flowering plant on the left. Now the sun is starting to go down, so you will see that it might be showing into my camera lens a bit, but not so much that you can't see. Sometimes on these road trips I'm driving for hours. And the inclines of this is at a steep angle. May not appear so in a flat video, but it is very steep. I like that they gave a place here that you could turn around. Really appreciate it. And when I turn around, you'll get a good view of Diego Martin again. Now, if this was skiing, this would be a good bunny slope. A bunny slope is for people who are normally beginning to learn to ski. But I imagine if you're the wild kind, this would also be good for roller skating. Probably will be going a little too fast. It's a blind corner. So that's Crystal Stream to the right where that car just turned in. That would take us to Pitti Valley. Behind this house, ahead of us and to the left, would be a place called Church of the of, of Nativity. I'm going to try and see if I could show it to you. It's a popular church for weddings. To me, every time you hear about the church, it's somebody getting married there. I don't know why they pick this church in particular, but all this seems to happen. This particular gate is locked. So I'm going to go in another direction and see if I can show you from that angle. Now, the interesting thing about the location of this church is it has several entrances. There's an entrance to the back of it as well. Not sure how the people around here feel about it. I imagine a lot of people try to park all around, blocking them. On the left is another entrance route, but I just wanted to briefly show you this part here. This is sort of a intersection, but really I don't know what the government is planning to do here. If it's to have a park, a place to sit or what. Really for me, it should be a flyover to eliminate that traffic light. Maybe that's for future plans. I don't know. However, that little area there does not seem to have anything going on much for it. 
On my way back, I just realized that I passed the entrance for the Church of the Nativity. So I'm going to reverse here and go back in. And that's the church. Were you married here? I know somebody that was married here or probably had their communion or whatever related to the church. Feel free to comment in the comments area about it. Just from thinking about it, I know a lot of people who were married there. So this is Crystal Stream. This would be the western side. Waiting for traffic to pass by here on the Diego Martin Main Road so I could get back onto it and show you some more areas. Look at that beautiful Pui tree on the right, flowering in yellow. It's always interesting for me when roads that lead up a hill or mountain just go straight up there's no turn there's no curve nothing just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and you can see the people in these areas have taken the time to care for their properties isn't necessarily the most luxurious or wealthy looking or anything like that but they do take pride in what they do and that's what I like in Tineron you can see some of the other houses I would pass by on the other side And again, while going down, you get a little view of Diego Martin and way on the other side of that mountain, that would be actually um, Pitti Valley. There's that beautiful Pui tree again. Now here's another section where you don't think it does, but it takes you to a whole other residential community on the mountain. So we're going to look at it. La Estancia. You can always tell me what you think about these places in the comments area. Do you like living up in mountains? There are some pros and cons to it. One of the biggest pros is the safety. It tends to be also more quiet. You don't have people walking up and down a mountain, right? You notice there's nobody around. I 
I can tell you some of the cons, but you can also tell me in the comments area. And it is quite steep here. And the view is also magnificent. And I really like when at the top of any mountain or at the end of the road, they have a little roundabout or a place to turn around. Look at that. It's not really nice. Get a good view from here. Not so much of Port of Spain because the mountain side ahead is blocking it, but it's still nice to look at. Really looks good. And as I've, I have said in my previous videos, when you see the other direction, for instance, going downhill as opposed to uphill, you get a different view of the houses, the scenery and so forth. And for me, in some ways, going down is more nice to look at than going uphill. Especially in this case, because the sun is in our lens when we go uphill. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Diego Martin or may come from other parts of Trinidad, there have been times when I have asked people to, for instance, when I was selling my truck and they wanted to meet and they would ask me where to meet and I would say Diego Martin and they would, if they were from like South or some area where they're not familiar, they would be like, oh my goodness, Diego Martin. I guess Diego Martin has developed a bad reputation because of certain areas that have crime. But all of this is actually Diego Martin. So not all of Diego Martin is bad. Like anywhere else in Trinidad, it really depends on the area and the streets within that area. Similar, similar to other places, sometimes how nice of a street you live on is really dependent on that street and not necessarily the area itself. An area can um, look really bad and then have a couple of streets that look really good and are, that are safe, as weird as that might sound. Now I'm trying to turn around here, but it's really steep. You can see how the, the whole screen is at an angle and I would have been able to make it However, the part in the back is also at an angle. And if I had continued, I'm pretty certain this would have actually tipped over the truck because it was just too much. So I decided that instead of reversing and turning around, I would um, just actually literally reverse back down that hill. This is again one of the things I was saying that at every dead end, there should be some way to turn around. Now, I know in the case of these people, they would have their garage or whatever to go into and they would turn around that way. But, you know, you may have a visitor, you may have somebody coming in the area. To make it safe for them, it shouldn't just end in a dead end. And what's more, such a narrow dead end you can see the angle of the driver on the left, plus the additional angle of the road. So that didn't make it um, safe at all. I do like the architecture though, very modern. It's the kind of style that I would like. I don't like lots of frills and colors and stuff like some people do. I like it basic, simple use of metal and concrete. Some people like to have all kinds of frills and trims and stuff on their house. I'm not one of them. 
Anyway, so going back to the area or the idea that somehow coming to Dago Martin is not safe. Um, first of all, too, you have to remember that Dago Martin is a very big area. It's probably one of the biggest communities in Trinidad. And so just saying Dago Martin really doesn't give you an idea of exactly where you live because it encompasses many miles of residences and commercial properties. So you would have to know specifically where in Dago Martin your person lives if you want to ascertain whether it's safe or not. And um, one of the pros for me in living on a mountainside or in places like this, like I said before, is it is more quiet, tends to be more quiet, less traffic, and people passing and walking up and down and speaking loud and so forth. And um, because of that, people enjoy their properties up here more than they would if they were near the main roads. Sometimes when you live near a main road, your brain and your ears just become accustomed to the noise and the traffic and the people passing. And it's only when you move to an area like this, where it's off of the main road, um, and there isn't a lot of thorough through traffic, well, then you begin to realize, wow, I was really living in a noisy area. So many of the houses around here are more of the upscale variety. So this part of Dago Martin is nice. If you, I know some people from abroad like to look at my channel in order to consider real estate choices. And um, this is one way you can do it. But as I have said in my many other videos, it shouldn't be the only way. Besides looking at the house itself, of course, you would need to look at it at various times. Because for instance, as just an example, this street might be very quiet now. But then when the evening comes, it's very busy. Lots of people around, liming and so forth. Of course, on this street is not like that. This kind of area would not have limers and stuff. But I'm just saying that for the idea of safety and whether the place will really be good before you buy, if you want to thoroughly check it out, then definitely check it at different times of the day and night. Sometimes too, you kind of have to purview who is going to be your neighbors, huh? because you can buy a, a property and find yourself not enjoying it simply because you have a neighbor that is a neighbor from hell. And I have been through things like that, where you have a neighbor that is a disaster, they're loud, they're in your face, they're always watching your business. They, um, you know, if there's street parking, they wouldn't park on their side, they'll park on your side. You know, all kinds of craziness that just shows that they are, um, they feel like they have their property and your property too. Um, there's just some people that are just not at peace in themselves. And so they feel like they need to broadcast just on unha unhappy, how unhappy they are and unfortunately sometimes if you live next to them you have to also put up with that so in your real estate hunting I would say you know don't just look at the house alone make sure and check out the area well maybe get out and talk to the neighbors let them know you're thinking about buying a property and you just wanted to see who the neighbors were you know, if some if they're really nice neighbors, they shouldn't mind. And if they're not, well, then you get an idea of, you know, well, the house looks nice, but the neighbors aren't.
Uh, that's just my two cents tip. I'm not a real estate agent. Feel free to also comment, huh? Give your own tips. I know a lot of you have a lot more experience than I do in many things. What do I know? So make sure and give your comments in the comments area. But as I always say, please do put a timeline because just blitting out something really does not help anybody because nobody will know what you're talking about. There is actually a option somewhere in the comments area. Sometimes YouTube moves the wrong stuff and depending on what device you use, whether it's a tablet, a phone or your PC, things may move wrong. But somewhere near the comments area is usually an option to put a timestamp. So it's not like you have to go searching. Just go to the part of the video that you're talking about click on timestamp or time or clock or whatever you see there and that will automatically tell you or put within the comments the time that you're talking about especially in a video like this that is so long three and a half hours you want to be able to let people know where in the video you're talking about rather than just blitting out something that nobody has an idea of what you're saying A lot of these areas are gated communities and um, they weren't always like this. Some of this was open land, some of it was residences and uh, during the course of time a lot of developers came in and thought you know rather than just one house and lots of land or land that isn't doing much um, we could develop it, turn it into townhouses, condos, apartments, what have you. And they're quite right because those things don't last very long even though they're very expensive to rent. Um, you know, they tend to go quickly because there's such a demand for places. Sometimes too you see a lot of houses, they look nice and whatnot, but they seem to be in a constant state of repair or perpetually being renovated. Sometimes a person may own a property but not necessarily have the um, money to do all that they want to to fix it up right away. So it's done piece by piece, piece by piece and so forth. And it takes time. Especially if you have other commitments, your family, children, work or whatever. But in general, no matter if you have things to do, always keep your property neat. Now, if you notice a lot of the properties we are going through here, they keep it neat, they keep it clean. I don't believe that has anything to do with being wealthy or not, or more affluent or not. It's just a matter of community pride. And I think every area, regardless of the financial or economic situation, can do that. So we're on the Dago Martin main road. We are heading back north. Sometimes with these road trips, I have to do them in pieces. This road trip is actually in two days. So we are looking at day one and sort of coming to the end of day one and going into day two within the same video. Now here is a turn off that would take us to either the Dago Martin Highway or to Pitti Valley. This stretch has gone under a lot of change. It used to be more green but as you can see, there's just lots and lots of construction and um, houses and it's very built up. 
this little section on the left here is where was is, where they fill water, as well as they sell doubles and stuff. They're sort of like trying to make their a little St. James. So this is me heading back home and this is be day two now. So this is Diego Martin part two within the same video. And what I'm going to do here is take different routes so that you can see all of Diego Martin. For instance, the Diego Martin Highway. I'm going to go this way, which would be heading in a southerly direction. And then I'm going to go the other direction as well. So you get a whole gist of Diego Martin, not just the residences, not just a few streets, but everything about it. Now this Diego Martin Highway is very unusual. They call it a highway, but the road, the infrastructure and the surface is not highway quality. When you're building a road for a highway, usually the road has to be made in such a way for high speed traffic. But this road isn't meant to be a highway. It, it was meant to bring a lot of cars in and out, but not at the high speeds that a lot of them go. And why do I say that? Well, one, this highway has a lot of curves. So the road bends left and right. And usually on a highway, it's more or less straight. And if it does, Bend. It bends at a slow angle. That way, if you're coming at a high speed, you gradually turn. But here, they, they are very sharp angles. And if you don't slow down, your cars can skid. And that is actually what happens. I've recorded numerous accidents on this highway. Some of them you would have seen in my crazy driving videos. Have you seen those? If you haven't, you should make sure to look at them because in those videos, I actually show just how crazy driving is here in Trinidad and Tobago. So one of the things that Ministry of Works or the government or whomever tried to do in order to fix this problem was to kind of grade the road. They bring in machinery and the machines basically put in traction into the asphalt so that it's not so smooth. And I guess that helps to some degree, but I still see accidents. Because you know, if somebody is going at a high enough speed, um, a little traction on the road is not gonna help. The other thing you'll notice is the, there's a lot of water accumulation on the highway. There are some parts in that highway that could literally be like a pool of water. That's definitely not something you want on a road where cars and trucks and stuff are going to be going at a high speed. The other thing that is notable on this highway and is probably not unique to this particular highway is there are a lot of potholes and depressions. Now, even more than a pothole, which is as bad as it is, is a depression. Sometimes you don't see it. At least sometimes you can see a pothole from... Um, a ways off and try to avoid it. But a depression in the road uh, may not be seen as well. And what happens is your car or your truck or whatever suddenly goes down into the depression and you might lose control. So that is another um, part of this highway infrastructure that just needs to be rethought. The other thing is that have you ever seen a highway with so many traffic lights? I think Trinidad is one of the only countries that calls their highways, or they call these kind of roads highways, but yet still put numerous traffic lights on it. To me, if you're gonna put lots of traffic lights, don't call it a highway. And if this stretch of road is so short, less than a mile, then it shouldn't be even called a highway. Now we just passed over where they were gonna they're gonna be doing a lot of construction. They're trying to build an octopus there. 
they haven't fully finished yet but it's getting there and this is some of the kind of um, traffic that you encounter when you come out of Diego Martin so I just came back from the other direction and we're heading back into Diego Martin again you can see the overhead <coughs> excuse me that is supposed to be a long a project that will enable cars to go any direction they want the more cocorit especially um, it used to be that they would have to turn and kind of merge into traffic which in turn used to cause traffic so they're trying to avoid that by putting that multi-million dollar octopus we just passed four roads and from the highway you can see a bit of the residences on both the right and the left on the left is Diego Martin and on the right is Pitti Valley and the Diego Martin River you can see it flowing that river when it's really full can get as high as this road I mean that doesn't happen too often but it does happen and I'm sure it's a major concern for the people who are in the flats that's one of the negative things about living on flats is that you're prone to being flooded you can be flooded living on a mountain huh? many people don't realize that the flood waters have to come from somewhere and they, they come from on the top of the mountains and in the process of going downhill they can flood homes so don't think that just because you live on a mountain you can never be flooded it's true that the water would dissipate faster than if you're in a flat but the water could still come through your home so that's why it's very important that people don't just build indiscriminately but they get um, approval from planning areas where people, you know, geologists took the time to check the area, check weather patterns, water courses and so forth to determine um, where can be built and where cannot. You know, you just as a lay person wanting to put up, you know, a few blocks and stuff doesn't mean it's okay. So we stopped at this traffic light here. This is Crystal Stream. So a young person here selling what looks like okros. And um, sometimes you see a lot of that. The vendors come and they sell their stuff and they go back on the side of the road. Now I never condone selling on the road because it's a dangerous thing. But I know some people have to live and it's okay for me when they they come uh, when the traffic light is red and they sell that's fine because the cars are stopped what is not fine for me is when the light is green and they're still standing in the middle of the road that to me is just dangerous it's just silly Carlos a lot of people can get hurt so always stand to the side of the road once the light is green especially as this is a quote-unquote highway and you can see how long it's taken to get into the inner parts of Diego Martin because of these endless traffic lights see we encounter another traffic light again and you see look it's going to turn red so if you you know one thing I have noticed if you tend to get a red light on one traffic light it almost seems like every traffic light ahead you will get a red light and that's what sometimes and I'm not saying this to excuse crazy driving 
But when you put establish a place like a highway and you put endless traffic lights on it, you know, it makes people frustrated. They want to go faster. They want to beat the red light to get green so they could keep going. But that's what happens in um, areas where there's lots of traffic and they don't really have the infrastructure or the planning to take care of it. Again, what's the matter with roundabouts? This, look at this vicinity, for, for instance. In my opinion, there is more than enough land right here to put a nice big roundabout. I mean, there isn't so much traffic here that a roundabout wouldn't be feasible. There's land across there by that tree. There's land on the left. A nice big roundabout will do well here in facilitating people to keep on going rather than having a traffic light. What do you think? I know some of you think that Trini drivers are not disciplined enough to work around roundabouts, but I think most of us are, most of them are. There's always going to be a few that, you know, just drive crazy, but that's going to happen regardless of whether the, the roundabout is there or not, because even with a traffic light, they still drive crazy. As you can see in my numerous crazy driving videos. So we come into the end of the highway and at the end of the highway is Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard as we turn left there. Most people will know here as Diamond Vale and Diamond Vale is a pretty old area old as in I have known it since I was a kid, but it was established, uh, I believe, with government houses, low-cost housing. And this Diamondville shopping center used to be a really happening place when I was young. They didn't have West Mall and big malls and stuff. So shopping areas like this was a big deal. They didn't have these little, I would call them shacks or little places. There just used to be a central place, which is what you're looking at now. And inside that green building, which for me is kind of odd colors because it wasn't that color before. I guess that's together with the colors of true value. There used to be uh, a supermarket, grocery, um, pharmacy. There used to be an arcade, different shops. So here was a, like a happening spot where you could come and hang out, eat or whatever. Um, as you can see, it's kind of, sorry to say, kind of rundown looking now. Uh, it's not as exciting as it used to be. And um, definitely doesn't have that draw. People just go there for what they need and get out. It's not like a liming spot per se. But you know, that has less to do with Diamondville Shopping Center and just more to do with the way the world is changing. Things are different now and um, people look for other things to entertain them and to do. Hanging out at a shopping center is not one of them anymore. So most people know the other side of Diamond Vale, which is by the school. But this is also part of Diamond Vale and Diego Martin. It's a very big area, very big residential area. And I can't say that I've been here too much myself. So I stopped to ask this lady for not really directions, but I wanted to find out just how far um, to south this this particular road would go, because I don't want to I don't want to leave Diamondville and end up in another area. Right now on day two here. I'm going to focus on Diamond Vale a bit. Now, Diamond Vale has a lot of roads, huh? lots of side streets and so forth. And unfortunately, I will not be able to cover it all. But 
but I will try to get the major streets. Now I saw something that caught my eye. I'm going to reverse and show you. Because I know again, these are things you may not necessarily see in passing by an area. Similar to what I did in day one. That's the Dago Martin River there. That is very mild. The water can go all the way up to the highway on top when it's really bad. So essentially all here would be water. That's one of the scary things, I guess, if you want to call it scary, of living near to a river bank. Just as, you know, all that water is right next to you. And if it breaks at bank, it'll come right into your home. Now, sometimes it's not easy to tell, but this road is elevated as it goes towards the mountain in the background. It's going up at a incline. So places up here may not be flooded. Only the ones nearer to the um, river. This area would be considered uh, by Trini standards to be middle class. And unfortunately, um, not everybody has the same cosmetic eye, I'll call it that, the way they maintain their property and the way they make it look. So you get all kinds of different size and shapes and colors with regards to homes, especially in the Caribbean, people like to use a lot of loud colors. When I say loud, I mean bright. You know, in North America, so things tend to be a little more subdued. But here they like a lot of loud colors. And that's in keeping with, you know, the Caribbean. Caribbean is about colors. I myself, I don't care for loud colors in a home. I like more pastels. Even if I did use a color, it would be a pastel color, or in other words, a, a more bland version of, of a color. So let's say I wanted to use blue. It would be a very light blue, almost like a white with just probably a blue hue, rather than a straight out, you know, blue that just burns your eyes, similar to that um, garbage bin on the left. Or like that house. I mean, it's a nice color, but it's just not my preference. How about you? What kind of color would you like for your house to be? And would it be a different color depending on where you live? For instance, being here in Trinidad, would you paint your house one color Versus living in the States, would you paint it another color or even paint it at all? Because um, North American architecture is a bit different. Sometimes it doesn't always involve painting per se. They use other methods of decorating the exterior. Some of it with artificial substances that I just don't like much. I prefer using actual rock, stone, cement, steel, etc. So this is one part of Diamond Vale. This would be the southern side and I'm heading now to the Dago Martin main road, which is up ahead. And as you can see, these streets can be very narrow. And even though they are so narrow, people still park 
on the side of it, making it even more difficult. That's not unique to Digger Martin, that happens all over the country. Um, those of you from North America watching these videos would also be in some ways astonished by just how close buildings are to each other. Usually abroad, you know, they give them a lot more space. Everything is kind of spaced out, so you have parking, you have um, a lot of walking space between the pavement sidewalk and the actual building. But here, um, land is at such a premium that there isn't all this space. So there's a lot of congregation between each building. Again, that has a lot to do with planning. If things were planned initially in a better regard, um, it wouldn't be like that so much, but it wasn't so. And what happens too is sometimes a property owner may have a lot of land, like let's say an acre of land with one structure on it, but then will decide to divide it up into lots and sell them individually for more money. And what happens is when the people buy the lots, you know, whereas you had one structure on one property, now you have four. So that's how things get a bit congested. This is Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard. And we're going on the other side of Diamond Vale. This would be the northern side. Again, there are lots of streets here. Side streets and whatnot. I, I wish I could say I, cov I could cover it all, but I just can't, especially with the time that it's taken to make this particular video. So I hope you can appreciate that. Sometimes I get these comments, why you don't turn here, why I didn't turn there, and Sorry to say, but I often have to wonder if people are paying a salary for me to make these videos. I don't mean to be rude, but um, instead of just showing some appreciation for, you know, even making the video so you could get a general idea of what the, the area is like, they complain. And in many regards, they actually criticize you for not going to their exact house so they could see it. Now, I'm sorry to say, if you want to hire me to go and record your exact house so you could see what it looks like to now, that would be something different than, you know, just my general video. And I actually have a frequently asked question section on my websites because people ask me the same things over and over. And it gets a bit laborious having to answer to each one when I when my answer is the same. So I have a frequently asked questions that I try to point people to. And it has it has for the most part done a very good job at taking away the many questions and comments and criticisms that I get. I don't mind criticisms, huh? I always like to hear what people have to say because it helps me to see what people are thinking of. Sometimes, you know, you're thinking about something or saying something and you're thinking one way and somebody is seeing it from a different perspective and taking it in a different way. And seeing it from their perspective helps me to understand just how people see things because you know we are all a product of our environment so when somebody says or does something um, you react it based on the way you were brought up or what you were told and so forth so you know I may not be privy to all those experiences that you had and hearing what you have to say helps me to get a gist of how people react to these things However, there are some things that, you know, just don't make sense or just are simply quote unquote haters. 
And those things I just leave by the wayside. I don't take them on. I just ignore it or block it and keep on moving. Because uh, one thing I also have learned in life is that in the end of the day, the most important thing and the most important person that will help you along with your life is yourself. And there will just be people all the time that will try to bring you down. Don't take them on, just keep moving. A lot of it has to do with jealousy too. Huh? People just can't see others making progress. I don't know why. What it is about that that affects people? What has your experiences been like with regards to communication, getting perspectives of different people, or people always complaining or criticizing what you do? Tell me in the comments area, making sure again to put in the timeline as to what you're referring to. Now, Diamond Vale is, as I said, more or less a middle class area. You have some houses that look nice, some that not so well, some that are commercialized. And um, I may get some flack for this, but I do not like when a residential area has as part of its property a commercial entity. It, it disturbs the rest of residences because your property now becomes a thoroughfare. And usually with commercial properties, they, you know, because it's just a money making affair, they don't really care about the surroundings or what is there and so forth. Now, I can understand if somebody has a small project at their home, but when you make it a big deal, like you take the whole property and you make it entirely commercial, to me, that's just a big problem. And Diamond Vale over the years has developed a reputation of one of crime. There has been murders in here, robberies, theft, and fairly commonplace to the point that it makes the news. Anytime your area is in the newspaper, you know it's getting bad. Sometimes, you know, you will hear a crime here and there, but it doesn't end up making national news. But when it happens over and over, or the crime is serious enough and it ends up in the newspaper, you know things are getting really bad. Diamond Vale is fitting that purview. Now, as you can see, I'm driving here and I, it's not like, oh, there's a series of limers or a series of, of people that are looking like they could hijack me at any moment. It's not like that. Yet still at the same time, you know, at night or when you're not home, somebody could break in or whatever have you. So the important thing is to always be very vigilant you know, have a very active neighborhood watch. And as you can see, Diamondville is very long. It's not like smaller areas. No, all of this is Diamondville and we're still driving. So, you know, if the community can get together and put up a good neighborhood watch, keep watchful, don't play a blind eye to suspicious activity. That would be really helpful. You know, you see a car that you don't know and it's parked there. If you have the ability to call your neighbor and say, you know anything about that vehicle outside? And they may say, yes, that's my friend visiting or no, I don't know. You know, all those things help to bring awareness and for people to keep an eye on what's going on in their community. Some people only take on crime when it affects them, like they may not bother if they hear their neighbors were robbed, they wouldn't care much, but the day that they are robbed, then that's the day they care more. You can see that this particular boulevard was recently paved. It wasn't like this before, it was really bad. And it probably won't take long for it to get back to how it was before. I don't know what goes on at roads here. 
if it's the trucks or just wasa digging up or whatever. But it seems like they would pave a road today and within a short period of time it's back with potholes all over. So you see I'm trying to go in and out of Diamond Vale as much as I can. There, are, Like I said, there are side streets. Um, I can't see them all because it would just take up too much time. What do you think about Diamond Veal? Tell me in the comments area. Is this a place that you would like to live? Yes, no. I can tell you that um, properties here would be over a million dollars, Trinidad and Tobago dollars, that is. That's right. And depending on the kind of house, the location and so forth, it could be several million. Two million, three million. You know, some properties might have several apartments on it and it could go for seven million, let's say. However, in this particular area, most of it, as you notice, is low gable flat houses, low gable, like a butterfly roof. You don't see too many two story houses. Not too long ago, they built up the um, Diego Martin Health Center, which is supposed to act like a, a mini hospital capable of handling emergencies and stuff. But um, in my experience of going there, yes, inside and everything is very modernized and Yes, the people know what they're doing and they have these machines and stuff, but one of the big problems with healthcare in this country is simply a lack of staffing. So sometimes you have very few nurses doing multiple jobs and they're dealing with a lot of people. And you know that can really make it work unbearable. They really need to staff places. And then too, the other problem is you have this big health center slash hospital, but then you only have one doctor within the facility. You know that, and you have maybe 30 people waiting outside. And they each have something different. So, you know, there needs to be more done with regards to incentivizing young people to study in the medical profession but also to stay in the country and I work and that can only be done if you again give incentives for people to do so so this is the Diego Martin industrial estate for many years, this section of Diego Martin was used to manufacture and produce a lot of the goods, actually, that you see on the shelves in the country. Some of them are produced right here. There are many factories here, warehouses and so forth. And so this is what this is about. This truck is um, coming out here, but it seems like he cannot pass. I guess his container 
cannot um, get past that turn. So just go to the side there to let them through. All right, so continuing here, I would see, show you more of the industrial estate. There's nothing really remarkable about it, but maybe it used to be that you worked up here or came up here and you just want to see what it looks like now. I can tell you that as a kid, all of here was a lot more green than it was. You did, you did see factories but you would just see like one or two. Now it seems like every block is a factory or a warehouse. And uh, again, because land is a premium, it's all congested. Again, it's called the Diego Martin Industrial Estate, and it's surrounded by um, places on the hills. Like, for instance, on that hill on, uh, in the background there, I mean, I could drive all up there and show you, but that would just take immense amounts of time. So I am not going to be doing that. I will show you some of the surrounding residential areas around here as time permits. A lot of these people walking here are workers. They finished their shift and what have you and they are going back home some of the things they produce in the back here is like clothes stationery, food, for instance, things like peanut butter, jelly and stuff, all of that's produced in the back here. It's packaged, boxed and shipped. And um, while unremarkable, things like this, many years, that dog like didn't seem to want to live. Um, things like this will have a lasting if impact as far as a historical record because I really don't know anybody um, from Trinidad that records videos like I do in this manner so thoroughly. Yes, I do see people, and I don't really watch other channels, but I do see people making videos and um, they're kind of like running through here and there with a little shaky camera and stuff. And I applaud their efforts, but it doesn't quite, the problem is that it, it kind of focus on the main stuff of an area. And what happens is you don't get a gist of actually what the area is about because they don't want to take as much time as I do to, to record everything, the raw. And that's what's unique about JB's Man Cave. My idea here is that by the time you finish seeing this video of Dago Martin, your mind, 
your eyes, everything will get a full idea of exactly what Dago Martin is like today. I'm sure you already feel that way. Like you feel like, okay, yeah, I know Dago Martin. Videos like this too also help you to kind of acclimatize to a place. Maybe you're living in Dago Martin and never went to the surrounding areas because you simply either don't have the time, the resources, or simply are afraid of going into areas that you don't know. Well, I'm doing it for you. This is all part of the industrial estate. At least it's the other side of it. There are some residences here, but you can see that it's not residential per se. It's like a mix of, um, you know, commercial open yards and stuff with houses dotted here and there. And the streets aren't very big. It's very narrow. And some of these streets can take you way into the mountains, huh? like this one here. I'm going to take you on it, which Plain Road is a very um, known road in Dago Martin. And there are many roads like this on off of the Dago Martin main road leading into the mountain. Um, I showed you some of them. This is another one, but I can't show you all. But you get a general gist of how the area is. And as you can see, a lot of people like to park on the road. And so that makes going up very difficult. And as you can see, there are always enormous potholes. And people build right up onto the road. So having all these walls and stuff makes the area look even more congested. We are going into the sun at the moment, but um, on the way back you'll get a better view when the, when the sun is not in the lens of the camera. This is in the afternoon by the way, the sun is going to be going down behind that mountain on the back. And as you can see driving here, it's sort of a, like its own little adventure. Sometimes you don't realize, wow, where do these places go? Where does this road end up? And as you can see, you could keep going and going and going. And for me in the distance, I didn't really see anything remarkable up there. And I didn't see anywhere to turn around. So I thought I would just save myself some time and resources by turning around here. But if you've never been far up Rich Plain Road, well, this is what it looks like. You can see all these snackets on the right. We just passed one, there's another one. Must be a lot of people living up there for them to have two snackets near to each other like that. 
course, you have trash all over. And you get a better view of the inner part of Diego Martin. Just imagine if you're living in here, and in order to get a taxi, you would have to walk all this way to get to the main road. Now, I'm pretty sure there must be P cars that may come up here every now and again, but I don't think it's, it's a common occurrence. And so you would have to walk all this distance to get to the main road in order to get a taxi. And um, while you can't tell, this road is at an incline. So if you just came home uh, from the main road and you had to walk this distance, you would be walking uphill. And that would be very tiring after a long day's work. Can see how far we are from the main road. I think that's one of the number one problems with the way structures are in Trinidad is just too congested. Sometimes you can't tell where one property ends and the other one begins other than because of a change of color. And again, this is um, the main road. So we finally reached it. And this part of Dago Martin here is, as far as the main road goes, is one of the busier parts of it. But not as busy as where West Bees is. Now, I had honestly thought about putting up a third D to probably try and capture places that um, I did not in day one and two, but I said, nah, you know, I have so much to do. I have lots of things to prepare for. Uh, so I just get what I can. But as you can see, it's very involved. So we're proceeding down the Diego Martin main road. Gukul Street. Some of these roads I'm not too familiar with. I'm just, you know, taking a random access area and trying to see if it takes us to something unusual. And while this is unusual, this particular road, is not eye candy, sorry to say. So, but 
it's part of Diego Martin, right? So we have to see it. Because Diego Martin is not just all the nice areas or the main road. This is all part of Diego Martin. Again, the end of the road for here, but hardly any place to turn around. So I have to try and navigate it slowly. There are some people who for instance, would cross that little bridge and go and start turning around in people's yard. I just don't like to do those kinds of things. You know, that's not my property. That's private property. And so I always try to turn around in the public areas. But there are some people who don't have any qualms about doing that. How about you? This particular street, there are a lot of limers. Usually wherever there's a snack it, there are limers. That's the pros and cons of having a snack it in your area. While there's the element of convenience, like you forgot sugar or salt or whatever, and you could just run to the snack it and get it. But at the same time, if if that snack it is next day home, that means a lot of noise, a lot of laughing, you know, maybe you're trying to sleep or whatever. There are many times I have encountered that problem trying to record videos where I live near a person that had a snack it in their home. And um at the time I'm trying to record, you know, people just like to hang around here in the Caribbean a lot. So instead of just getting what they have to and going home, no, they stand up there and they start talking and making jokes and laughing. And they, they often can't keep it to themselves. So they start being very loud, laughing out loud, talking loud. And you, I mean, even though they are across the street or whatever, you could still hear them so bad that it's picked up by the mic. It's a Catholic church here. And the school to go along with it. They go Martin Boys RC School. Maybe one of you went there. You can always tell me in the comments area. I often wonder what it would have been like education wise if there was not early intervention by the Catholics in the early days of Trinidad's development. Now this is not necessarily to praise the Catholics, but I just wonder um, what would have happened if the Catholics didn't decide to put up schools. What would school life be today? Have you ever thought about that? Other denominations have put up schools too but not on the scale of the Catholic Church. They have really gone to every little nook and cranny and areas to put up schools and churches. So I am back on the Diego Martin main road. On the left there, that 
cream and red building that is actually the post office the main Dago Martin post office and on the right here is a grocery I am just going to turn in here for a second or two to get something so you will see the camera stay here and then immediately cut back just like that usually in these trips I take one of my sons he just loves to be with me so you know driving all this driving around in the hot sun you want a nice cool drink sometimes I just like water but occasionally I will have something called a malta or smalta which is a non-alcoholic malt beverage made from hops it's hard to describe the taste it's called kind of like a licorice taste mixed with barley it looks like coffee I know <laughs> for those of you who are unfamiliar with the drink that might sound like a disaster my wife doesn't like it at all she wonders how I could drink that stuff but I love it now there are many arteries leading up into the mountain we're going to explore some of them here Sometimes you will reach a street corner and you, you often have to decide do I go left, do I go right, which which would take me to something a little more interesting. Sometimes with me it's just the I just kinda survey what it looks like and see maybe maybe there's something interesting up here and I would just turn. Other times I actually do know exactly where I'm going and trying to reach it. But in this case, I don't see anything remarkable here and I want to get further up into the mountain. So we are going to turn around and go to that street that's straight ahead. That will take us further up to the western side, which is up into the mountain. And as usual, you know, in these little streets, you always have to make sure and navigate all these cars now as I've said before I don't make these videos as a hobby this is a way to support my sons I have children on the autism spectrum they have in many ways um, not given been given their just due in life and um, this is one of the ways to help support them take care of their medical, their education, and so forth. Uh, if you would like to help support me, so help them, please do consider making a donation at jbsmancave.com or jbo.com. There are donation links there, but also in the description of this video is a link directly to make a donation. And I would hope that um, you you don't just look at this video three and a half hours long and just say okay thanks that was nice but you actually genuinely consider making a donation contributing to all the work that has been involved and uh, you could also consider that it's christmas time and that would be really nice of you to donate um i am trying my best to bring out a lot of these videos for you as I said before I am considering making a membership section too and you know if it is that I can have lots of members join and contribute monthly um, by giving them maybe early access or access to videos that other people don't see that would also help um, bring in the kind of funds that I need to help support my boys. Um, I am doing 
something here which is um, sort of like on a mission and it's with the um, prospects of helping them in the long term but in the short term I have to go through many sacrifices and your help and support can really help me break through with that. So please do consider um, supporting JB's Man Cave here. It's really appreciated. I know not all of you can, eh? especially probably those of you from Trinidad and Tobago. You may not have the funds, but there are others who can. And uh, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just imagine if, let's say, a hundred thousand people watch this video. And each of them just gave 50 cents. Just imagine how much of a help that would be to um, support my boys and, and get what they need and so forth. Anyway, so we are going up this part of Dago Martin. And as you can see, it is unlike other parts of Dago Martin that you have seen. And I mean, I could keep going up and up and up. But the sun is going down and I want to cover some more areas of Dago Martin before I lose all light. So I kind of decided to turn around. But one part, one thing I like about this particular part of Dago Martin, it is very unique to Caribbean culture. You see the little snack, it hot there, the bridge, the garbage there, a wasa place, people liming in the road, the potholes on the road, buildings just put up here and there, some of them no purpose. You know, all these things, you know, are things that you grew up seeing and you may take for granted. But when you live abroad and stuff, you can see just how unusual it is. But this is what it's like in the Caribbean. And unfortunately, when you have a country like Trinidad and Tobago that kind of congests everything together, you get this. And when I say this, I mean everything just crammed together. Hardly any space, not even space for vehicles to park. So, I don't know if there's even a solution for that anymore. The way roads have been built, the way things have been, you know, the planning that has gone into it or lack of planning. They're just places all over. That's a nice house there on the left. And you know the irony in it is there's just so much land around in the mountain faces and other places. But you know people just want to be in a particular place. And uh, sometimes you really can't blame them for that. But, I don't know, infrastructure is just lacking so much. And when there's a lack of infrastructure, people just don't feel like they need to um, do anything to better the area or themselves. It's an interesting little bridge here. Can you imagine if you were a Amazon delivery driver and you had to come up in these areas looking for an address? That's another problem with locating places here. 
well we just got zip codes and stuff nobody really uses that and you might get an address to come to an area but the you know looking for it on a map sometimes you may not even see that street on map even if you use google maps the street is not listed and you often have to stop and ask people where it is and sometimes the houses are not numbered properly um, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you will see a house and you know you start seeing let's say because on one side of the street would be odd numbers the other side would be e uh, even numbers so let's say you might be following along a street looking for a certain number and you, you know you're following two then you see four then you see six and then you see 97 and you're like what the heck so all those problems exist in um the way everything is established in the country and the lack of um oversight and enforcement actually a lot of times because sometimes a lot of the problems with building is people build illegally and nobody is coming around and checking and saying you know what you can't put that up here and just take it down um, and a lot of the reasons they do that too allowing people to just do what they want is political reasons people only want votes they want to reach their whatever and so they don't enforce the laws and it has become so bad that um, the laid-back lifestyle here is known throughout the world eh? in my travels sometimes I will say I come from the Caribbean or Trinidad or whatever depending on how much they know about the Caribbean and one of the first things that foreigners will always tell me is just how laid back the people are I don't know if that is necessarily a positive I heard some time ago we got the reputation of being one of the happiest but happiest in what regard sometimes being happy quote unquote happy doesn't necessarily mean true happiness huh? and I think probably they mean the most carefree um, or probably you know you may be happy or content with what you have but it may not be actually right for you if that makes sense I don't know if you understand what I mean what I'm trying to say anyway this is the um, Diego Martin's port and complex on the right there that we're passing this is the place where I said in the beginning of the video that was all green and um, I used to know a family in the back here all of this was just farmland as far as the eye can see going all the way back to the mountain and look at it now nobody would ever believe that here was farmland but it is and you know that that's the thing right being that here was farmland at one time it could have been that if there was proper planning the roads could have been um, marked out better there could have been better infrastructure put in place and so forth and then people come and settle but things are often done in the opposite way here for instance a place will become built up and then the people will complain and then government will have to come in and start putting in roads, putting in lights, putting in water. And so it's, it's, it's done in the reverse. And that's what makes areas congested and, and doesn't seem to have any proper planning or whatever. Because everything is done in reverse. And that's because there aren't enough places for people to live. And so what they do is they just simply get whatever land they can and just start building 
and who could blame them? Now, when I was um, young, as a child, um, renting a place was actually a pretty simple thing. And when I say simple, it wasn't such a big deal. Like it is now, you know, it's expensive and people want references and they want this and that and, you know. In the old days, you would just simply go and rent because actually not many people were interested in renting. Most people tend to have their, have their own place or um, they would live by their relatives or whatever until they could do better. And nobody really rented much. Now renting is like, wow, everybody wants to rent. And the most unusual places you'd see for rent as well. And again, like I said before, demand for housing and stuff has forced people to go to the most unusual areas, the unusual nooks and crannies, and just start building. And everybody has their concept of what their particular space should be like, right? So some places are well kept and some places aren't. Some places are built with thoughts and um, some kind of engineering in mind and others are just, you know, things just thrown up, whatever. And I'm sure somebody will complain and say, well, you know, people have to live or people need to do whatever they can. So, but you know, everybody just in, in Trinidad, especially kind of just thinks about what they want to achieve, but don't look at the community at large, the greater good. You know, an area can prosper if things are just done in a proper way, but nothing here is done properly. It's too much bureaucracy and red tape. Tell me what you think. Up ahead, that area is called Blue Basin. This is actually Patna Village, but um, if you went straight ahead, I'm not sure if you could actually access it from this road or if you had to go further on and then turn left, but up in those, that hilly or mountainous area in the background, is where you would access the um, river and the basin. Now I have a more thorough video that shows you more about this area. So I'm not going to cover it much. In that video, I actually go street by street and I'll actually cover up any mountain too. That's a different drive, so I don't want to take away from that. I kind of just went in the back there by the stadium just to kind of make a loop and show you how everything is accessed, but I don't want to do that. See, that's the water wheel on the left there. And that's a museum on the right, both of which I feature in other videos. So as I um, finishing up these parts of Dago Martin, I'm going to get go to another part of Blue Range off of St. Lucian Road, which is, could be considered the more upscale part of Dago Martin, or one of the more upscale parts of Dago Martin. But you can judge that when you look at the environment. But it just shows you how places can be if they are well maintained and kept. You know, everything has to be built exactly on the side of the road and pushed together. And so you will see um, what it's like in a minute when I take one of these roads.
Of course, one of the first things you recognize when a place looks um, always better kept is there's always a lot of green. And when I say green, not just bush growing, I'm talking about there's a lot of landscaping done. Flowers, trees are planted in particular places and everything is in order. You can see it has a, a level of eye candy to it. In addition to, of course, the house. And you can see where they tried to gate off that area before. But um, not every area can be gated. So again, we all, all of this is part of Diego Martin. I need to take a water break. All this talking. Are you the kind of person that could talk and talk and talk and talk? I'm really not much of a talker, to be honest. This particular part here, just look at this. It looks really nice. The green, that Caribbean look in that house in the background. Wow. It looks even nicer in person. This particular road itself too. Look at it, it's really nice. This is a nice place to live. Notice even the empty lot is all cut and maintained. Look at the houses. What do you think? Is that a place you would like to live? Look at the tree, look at the green. This is how Caribbean places should be. And there's absolutely nothing wrong or nothing stopping other places that we've been in Dago Martin from looking just like this. Now the, the houses may not be as big, they may not be as kept, they may not be as colorful, but they can be clean. Because you notice know, these places have walls and stuff too, right? But everything is in order. I just wish, you know, people in Trinidad could keep all their places in order like that. Clean, everything, no garbage all around, stuff everywhere, you know, that whatever mode. It doesn't have to be like that. We can have some pride in our country. Now, in driving around here, it's, it's kind of like a maze. At least it was for me a bit. So, you might find that I um, walk, or, or walk around. I drive around here a few times. But, you know, you get to see more of the place. Sometimes your eyes are going left to right quickly, trying to take in everything. So, seeing it another time again helps you to pick up stuff. This is a nicer part of Diego Martin. And it sort of comes to an end here, so I'm going to have to turn around. At least there is the option to turn around, like some of the other 
roads I've been in made it very hard. The elevation of this particular residence is not that very, is not high, so you don't get a, a fantastic view. I mean, you can see the background. There are places that you can see, but it's not so high. In the Pity Valley video, I got some good views with the houses, they're built way up into the mountain. Here is sort of elevated, but more or less like flat. But they make you, they, they, they utilize a lot of trees, if you notice, to provide shading, to bring any birds. This make the area look pleasant. Just love it. What about you? What do you think? Tell me in the comments area. Some kids riding a, looks like a electric toy vehicle. Looks like there might be some function or something going on here. See some of these um, homes are really nice. And if you notice, we just passed a home that has no wall. That's very rare. And um, one thing I do I've noticed with uh, and the one on the left has no walls either, which is also rare. And um, it would be actually nice if we could have homes here without walls. That would make it a lot, a lot more roomy. But at the same time, crime is an element, so I, I can understand why people put up walls. But if you notice, the walls are not onto the road. There's some space between the road, the grain, and the wall. And that's the way it should be. Now, if this was a more trafficked area, not a residence, you know, that would be sidewalk, a sidewalk or a pavement. But in this case, it's not necessarily per se to have a sidewalk or pavement because, you know, most of the people coming up here would have, probably have their own vehicle. There's not a lot of cars coming up here. So this is the area we came from before and I'm going to be turning back into it again. I was trying to capture all the um, roads. A lot of people come here to walk, run, jog from the area. And it looks like it would make a very good um, path for that because it, you know, some parts are uphill, some are downhill, some are flat, you know, to keep it interesting. And I, I didn't see any dogs rushing out into the road, so it looks relatively safe too. It's funny to see those benches there. Usually people in these kind of areas don't have um, benches on the outside, so they don't encourage liming. So it's interesting to see that. So 
So I think we caught most of this area, not all of it, but um, enough here to get a gist of what this particular area looks like. As you can see, it's nice, nice place to live. Blue range. I can only imagine that um, houses in here cost millions. But we are going to um, head back to the St. Lucian Road, which is the main road here. And we will be driving on the side of Pitti Valley, but we're still in Dago Martina. And we're going to see another part of Dago Martin that wouldn't have otherwise be covered. And this part of Dago Martin is nearer to Pitti Valley. Again, showing you the contrast of areas. First, I'll get one of these side streets here. before I complete the area. For instance, this particular street is apart from the other parts that we came from. But you can see it's well kept. And um, everything is in order, landscaping, whatnot. Just beautiful. This is this to me is what the Caribbean should look like. You know the houses, the architecture, the way it's designed, the use of the plants. This is how it should be everywhere. I'm not saying the house has to be big like that, but you know, just kept. There is nothing stopping every community from being like this. And, you know. I don't know, it just probably has something to do with the way people think because I see in North America certain areas too that um, there's nothing really stopping people from, let's say, picking up the trash or wrong or cutting their grass or making the place look good. But, you know, just because the areas are lower income or whatever, they just don't care nothing. And you can see the place get run down. And when that happens, it devalues everything else around the neighborhood. And <clears throat> that kind of pisses me off somewhat. And I'm sure it makes a lot of other people to get angry because when other people do that, it devalues the value um, of their home. Uh, just have pride in the area. But I know some people are just, I don't know, just sloppy. They just don't care about other people or other things. So they just leave their trash about. They just don't care. No sense of pride, no sense of community. Do you have that problem in your area? Let me know in the comment section um, about it. Now, by this traffic light here, if I was to turn right, that would take me to Wendy Fitzwilliam Boulevard and Diamond Vale. So, as you can see, we made like this gigantic loop. And look at those mountains in the background to your right. All of that was Dago Martin, and we came from all of there. So, I'll show you how big it is. All of this is Dago Martin. A lot of people think this is Pity Valley, but this is not Pity Valley yet. This is all Dago Martin. And we get to see a big red fire truck coming out of here. It wasn't for putting out a fire. So as we turn in here, this is on the other side of the valley. And again, a lot of people confuse this and they think, oh, this is, we're now in Pity Valley. No, this is not Pity Valley yet. 
This is all Dago Martin. And if you haven't noticed, I, I know we here here we say Dago Martin instead of Diego Martin or Diego Martin. People here, you know, they get accustomed to saying names of places and they just short end it. And that's what I'm doing too. So this is a pretty busy street. You wouldn't think it is because it's a very short street. But every time I come in the back here, there are always people around, people on the street and so forth. I don't know why. Must just like coming around, getting around and so forth. Anyway, um, it more or less ends here. So I kind of have to turn around and that's the end of this tour for this section of Dago Martin. See again, all that trash there. I mean, it's put in one place, but it looks like it's been there for quite a while. The lack of cutting the grass and stuff, you know. Things can just be better. Look at the contrast when I just turn simply into this road. And look, everybody just keeps their place in order. See the difference? And all I did was turn a road, right? What was the difference? The same basic area. Just people have more pride in the area and stuff. And it's not like, oh, these houses are big or they are mansions and all. It's just people taking care of their area, putting up their trees, their pruning, they put some paint. You know what I mean? A lot of people get angry when I talk about this, huh? but I have the feeling it's because they're part of the ones that don't mind seeing the trash there or don't mind seeing the place look run down. They don't mind that it reflects that kind of, you know, I don't care attitude. I always like to see I always like to see things in order. I just, you know, don't like see dirtiness and messy and stuff all over and stuff. It's just not in me. I would feel so uncomfortable. Alright, so we're back here on St. Lucian Road. I'm going to go across the street into this section. A lot of flat houses here. You can see where in this particular community they try to um, keep everything nice and clean and in order. Again, it's not affluent or anything like that. But just, you know, people make sure their streets are clean, make sure they look at the garbage all in order, bag properly and so forth. You know, and that's what I was saying about streets here. You, you know, you could be in the same area and just turn in a street and it's like a whole other area. You wouldn't even think you're in the same area. And then you might go to another street and it's like a disaster. If you're one of those really wealthy people, then to keep things in order, you'd you know you'd want to buy your street if you can, 
or as much of it as you can so that way you can establish the kind of houses and the way it's maintained and keep the area and the community in a proper order a lot of people establish what are called homeowners associations where they become a legal entity that can decide who and how people live within a certain community there are pros and cons to that eh? sometimes you buy a place but it almost seems like it's not fully your, your own because the association could come and start telling you something about how you live or whatever but the pro about it is that you get everybody else kind of conforming so if somebody decides oh i'm going to paint my house fluorescent yellow with pink dots and you know that's going to really make your house or your area degrade in value then the association could come in and, and tell them that they have to, to either stop that or do or change it so in that regard is good probably they need more of that here but then you know sometimes people here could get on so ignorant get so angry over the simplest of things they can't be told anything that instead of seeing the bigger picture they they just retaliate so I don't know if something like that would work here I know it works for places like West Morris where there's a association for that a board that actually meets and makes decisions about properties and people coming into the area and so forth I don't know about other areas if you know about it feel free to comment look at the houses on the right up on the mountain of course as you can see this is another nice part of Digger Martin yes a lot of people think this is Pity Valley but this is not Pity Valley this is Dago Martin I have another video for Pity Valley and on top of here when I do go up the mountain you will see that it has a really nice view Now I wanted to go in further in. There isn't much further in, but um, that car is kind of like the driver is kind of like indecisive over what he's doing, and, and time is running out on me. So I decided I would just turn around and um, head up the mountain because I still have a lot of pool gardens to show you. And going up the hill, the um, mountain, you can see some of the engineering that went into some of these houses. Very interesting. They have gigantic retaining walls. Steel. I mean, they're solid places. They're not, you know, cheaply built. Now, up ahead, where you can see the houses on the mountain or on the other side, that's Pity Valley. I'm going to go further up here. And as I do so, you could see even more. When I turn around, you will get a really nice view. And you see, once again, they have a nice little area here. You could turn around 
and some steps that had seemed seemingly go to somebody's place. Hmm, interesting. See, now you can get a good view. You can see all the way out into West Moorings, and below is Dago Martin. To the left is some areas of Pitti Valley, but this is all really Dago Martin. You can see how big it is, it's huge. And that's only like quarter of Dago Martin. Now you can see the other side of the Oman, see? And it's all going around this mountain. So that's why it's very hard to cover all of Dago Martin. It's, it's just enormous. So many streets, so many places. And even in places like this, well, there will always be potholes, right? No one is spared from that. And occasionally you'll see where the residents mix concrete and they filled it. Something that the um, Ministry of Works, they're the ones who um, take care of roads, do not like people to do. They rather you just have the pothole there. You know, some people can't wait forever and ever and ever. So they fill it up with concrete sometimes. This particular strip of road has gone through many changes. And when I say that the functionality, for instance, that bar and grocery on the left wasn't there before. And I remember way back when a lot of people were complaining about it because they didn't want their residential area to turn into what is a bar and a pub and people liming and so on. I can fully understand that. I wouldn't like it either. Um, it used to be a more involved pub. I think that part of it closed down and now it's just a simple mini mart, which works well. Less traffic, less night activity. I like the pruning of that shrub up ahead. I believe it's sweet lime. Looks good. You can see the sun is starting to um, set in the background as it goes behind the mountains. Visibility is not as great anymore. So this part here is where we are going to be finishing off this two day, three and a half hour, almost three and a half hour road trip in Dago Martin. I really hope that you enjoyed the trip. I hope you didn't mind me um, rambling on and on. I know I could have left natural songs, but um, I had my son with me. We were talking. We had the radio on, the sound of the engine. Nothing um, that you would want to hear or should hear. I do have videos like that, huh? if, if that's something that interests you, where you want to hear the natural songs and stuff. Well, 
I do have videos like that, you can look for them. This one in particular is talking. Um, I used to have more of my videos related to just music. And people just started nagging me to talk, talk. They wanted them to hear from me. They wanted them to hear my comments. And really, that's how I started to talk. But um, before that, I really didn't say much. You'd see a lot of that in my early videos. Some of the houses here are huge. Look at that one in the background. It looks like a castle. When you see it from the distance, it also looks like a castle. It's an enormous house. Well, friends, if you like what I do, don't just say thanks. Please head over to jbsmancave.com or jboard.com. Make sure to contribute and donate. Show your support by giving monetarily. Those of you who really can't, please do like, comment, let other people know about JB's Man Cave. I hope to um, reach a place where I am very far from. And with your support, I can get there. I do these things in support of my uh, family, my boys, and to help them. I really appreciate you watching, being here with me in this road trip. Let me know if you were able to watch the entire video. I would be interested to know if you have such gusto. Thanks so much. I appreciate you.